Blockchain, crypto, NFTs, DeFi, Metaverse, Web3 is literally eating the world and community builders are the new leaders. Hi everyone, I'm Bilal El Alami, co-founder of Paris Lab, a startup studio fully dedicated to Web3 startups. In Paris Land, I'll give the mic to Web3 builders, founders and investors so that we can deep dive with them into what is truly about Web3 entrepreneurship. No conventional bullshit, only creativity, rebellion and community-driven insights. All right, good morning everyone. Uh, today I'm very pleased to have uh, Pablo, the founder and CEO of uh, Angle Money, Angle Protocol, what do we say? Uh, Angle Protocol, it works, Angle it works well. Okay, great, thanks, 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 thanks. So uh, just like Paul Frambo, we had uh, the previous time, uh, the subject of today is going to be toward DeFi, uh, but this time uh, not necess necessarily on, uh, on financial products, uh, but uh, more stable coins. Um, and today we're with uh, Pablo Vera. Thank you, Pablo. Uh, thanks for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. How are you today? Uh, doing great, doing great. It's, uh, uh, it's been a tough week, uh, um, like after the FTX. A shit show, we can say it. <laughs> it, it was definitely a shit show, but... Uh, you know, it's a good time to, to show the, um, the resilience of a decentralized finance protocols. Definitely. So um, on the w I'm, I'm kind of balanced on this, you know, on the one hand, like the public faces of DeFi uh, and of blockchains have shown to the rest of the world that um, like they, cannot, they could not be trusted. So overall, people who don't know about blockchains uh, will be like, oh, if these guys are blockchain, I don't want to trust them. I don't want to deal with them. But on the other hand, uh, what failed was not DeFi, it was the, like there was no protocol which, which failed. It was just CeFi and people uh, having bad transparency practices. So it's good and bad at the same time. And even taking advantage of the blurry area of crypto to, 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 to be very aggressive on, on the market. So it's definitely, um, it, it's, it's not even a, a, a good behavior for a general entrepreneur, so I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah, and uh, as entrepreneurs, like, it's the, the we, we don't have the same values, you know, as the, the guys as uh, FTX. And I, I feel like everything that happened since the month of May with the crash of Luna, Three Arrows Capital, and everything that was involved, it showed that in people there are uh, high integrity people and people who are just here for the money. Um, at the moment, uh, 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 we try at Engel to be as integer uh, as, as we can, um, like to, to, to stand by values and not to be driven by the money. And you know, like last week, there was all this shit show with, with FTX, but we only spent uh, like uh, one hour looking at what was going on on Twitter, but we kept building. It was not a week off for us, just like <laughs> the Luna crash was not a week off. And I believe, and I tweeted this uh, last week, that over the long term in the, in the space, uh, there is going to be a, a high premium for people who stick to their values and try to, to maintain a high integrity standards. Definitely, for sure. I mean, uh, I've been here since uh, 2016, 17, and it was kind of the same with the first cycle and the abuses of, of ICOs. And all the company that were on the entrepreneurs that were resilient enough, they kind of doubled their value influence by 10. Um, and, and hopefully there will be a, um, this other circle will reveal uh, even better entrepreneurs. Bear market, it removes some uh, some of the noise, uh, but there is still a lot of a lot of noise. Uh, like uh, the ratio signal to noise is not <laughs> as you could as you could wish for. But I guess it's like in other industries. Um, one thing is particularly about um, French and European projects is that technically we are, I believe, as good uh, if not better than many of the uh, American and Silicon Valley type. Uh, projects, DeFi projects, blockchains, and so on. But we are not as good uh, in marketing. Um, we don't have the same ability as American people have to market ourselves, uh, to market our projects. And so if you put like two projects with the same technical fundamentals, the American one will stand out more than the European one. Um, it's a question of <laughs> culture. It's a question of value. Uh, no, I mean, not value, but it's really a question of how education, like how people are raised uh, in the Also, industry. maturity of, uh, of, of investments strategies. I, I feel the European investors are, are very conservative, um, whereas American investors are way more bold uh, than European. Um, I do agree, and they have more money. Uh, so when a European investor is going to risk 5% uh, of its fund on a company, it's going to be like a $5 million check, a $5 million check, but 
uh, an American investor risking 5% of its portfolio, it's going to be a $20 million check. <laughs> so um, they, they have more money, so it's, 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 it's easier for them, uh, even if they, have, uh, if they had the, the same like, uh, risk, uh, risk, uh, risk tolerance. Um, so on our side, uh, we at Angle, uh, Angle Labs, the company, one company which is behind the, the development of the Angle protocol, mm -hmm. we raised with uh, A16Z, an American investor, um, because it was so easy with them. Uh, I mean, it was so easy. We, we knew the value they, they were providing, and we knew we could um, get more with them than we could have at the time with other European obviously, investors. Obviously, obviously. But um, enough of the, of the drama. <laughs> What about, uh, what about you? Where, where did you grow up, uh, Pablo? Um, Are you Parisian? Or I'm a Parisian, full Parisian. Uh, not, not so funny, like, uh, uh, I feel I, I'm a bit like the cliche of the student in an engineering <laughs> school. Uh, I went to high school in the 16th neighborhood of Paris, uh, so I, I've been lucky enough to go to good, uh, good high schools. Then I went to class prépa uh, in Versailles. Uh, then I went to Polytechnic. Um, and after Polytechnic, I decided to, I, I studied mostly econ uh, and, and computer and applied math in Polytechnic, okay. but I did not want to be an engineer. Classical path. <laughs> Classical path, yeah. I, I didn't want to be an engineer, you know. I thought that uh, after prepa, I was done with all the technical stuff, uh, yeah. and I wanted to, to do things that were not technical. And then uh, I did my master's degree at Stanford University. And at Stanford, uh, I started to realize it's cool to know how to do stuff by yourself. Uh, it's cool to know how to code. Uh, in fact, it's cool to be an engineer. Uh, because at some point I was like, no, I'm not going to be an engineer. I should have gone to uh, a business school. Uh, but, um, you know, I've it was good for me to, to really start taking again a technical lessons at Stanford. So I, um, then I was in the classical. Um, what was the master's about? Master's management, about? science, and engineering. So okay. it was. It could have been bullshit classes, like uh, business classes, and like it. I, I could do anything I want. Uh, I could have taken only business classes, but I could only have taken also machine learning classes. So okay. that's what I like about uh, the U.S. You know, like. There are no big constraints on what you can do. Just do what you want to do. But if you do it, try to do it well uh, and, and, and make, uh, make the best out of it, uh, which is a bit like uh, less constraining than the French system where you have to fall within certain bounds and you have to take this class and this class and this class. Otherwise, people um, uh, won't consider you an engineer. You know, to be considered an engineer in France, you need to have done chemistry, physics, uh, math. In the US, they, they can still consider that you are an, an engineer while you've only done math. <laughs> it's also why it's I, I think it's really a question of mindset. Really a question of mindset. <laughs> but so yeah, like um, I, I wanted to work in M and A, private equity. But then I was like, okay, maybe I'm going to try being an engineer uh, for <laughs> some time. I was in the classical path of um, French students uh, in the Silicon Valley uh, who want to work at Facebook, uh, Google. So uh, I was taken for a data science internship at uh, at Facebook uh, for summer 2020. Um, but it was COVID, um, oh. and when COVID struck, I came back to France okay. uh, because Trump uh, announced that he would close the border. Yeah, that was so um, <laughs> I, I did another internship in France uh, because Facebook didn't want to keep me and, and they were right uh, if I was in France and the rest of the team yeah. uh, in, uh, in the US. And then, um, you know, I, I took my first uh, crypto class when I was in Polytechnic. It was an econ economic uh, class, so there was no coding in it. It was just understanding the basic principles of uh, what DeFi is, uh, I mean, not even DeFi, what blockchain is. Um, I really liked it. Uh, I invested a bit after that, it was in 2019. Um, and then um, late 2020, after my, my summer internship at Stanford, I was like, okay, I really like the class. I still love the concept. Uh, maybe I need to dig a bit deeper. So I took the crypto class at Stanford. Nice. And then I was all in the rabbit hole, you know. Um, in and, and, um, and so um, what were the other Profiles in your in your in your in your classes at Stanford, but they all wanted to be engineers. Uh, most of them are either doing consul consulting, yeah. uh, McKinsey, B uh, BCG. Um, some are working um, in uh, in VC. Some uh, are working in uh, investment firms. Okay. Some uh, are scientists, uh, like data scientists in um, in other big companies. And there is a big portion of it, the best ones, are uh, traders at like uh, Jump, Citadel, and so on. Uh, okay. These were the most high-end places where you could hope to go when you were in my master's degree. Okay. Um, 
and there is another branch of people who wanted to create their own company and it's crazy how when you arrive at Stanford like everyone like everyone is on the mindset uh, I mean not everyone but many people are on the mindset uh, of oh I'm going to create my own stuff uh, and people are thinking of company ideas every time and when you are here when you don't necessarily want to create your company uh, you know it's there is like a contagion effect <laughs> uh, and you, you see oh this student it was in, in the same in the same classroom and this guy built snapchat oh this guy was in the same classroom and this guy built instagram so wh why not me like uh, wh what do they have that i don't have um, technically i feel i know how to do some stuff now it's just about uh, trying and iterating um, so I, I i we took the crypto class uh, i had no idea of what DeFi was and I had no idea of who the big names were. Uh, turns out that the big names went to speak uh, in this crypto class. So we had the Paradigm guys, we had the A16Z guys right. um, who went to talk uh, at the crypto class. And then um, like after the class, in, at the same time, I started to play with the protocols uh, with which, which we were discovering uh, in the class. So I started investing a bit on Compound, trying to do some Uniswap swaps. I, I did not understand where the yield uh, came from. Uh, but I understood that I was investing in uh, USD stablecoins and that the value of the USD stablecoins was decreasing with respect to the euro because late 2020, uh, the dollar took a hit uh, yeah. with respect to the euro. So the yield I was <coughs> making got offset by the USD euro change risk. And so out of nowhere, I was like, okay, maybe we need to create a euro stablecoin. I didn't know like, if there was a market for it. Uh, I just uh, thought it would be something fun to build. Um, and I really liked the environment. So. I was applying at the same time to some crypto companies. Uh, didn't get many replies because it was just like cold mails in the US. Yes, but it was just cold, cold mails. Uh, I, I had no referrals and basically one person chance of, of being accepted. Um, sent cold mails, didn't get replies. And, and at the same time I was like, okay, maybe it would be fun to think about doing my own protocol because uh, I feel it's something cool like uh, if you think about it, like on the mathematically speaking, because there are some math in DeFi protocols, economically speaking, because there is some game, game theory in it, and game theory is the space uh, I prefer, like uh, wh what I prefer, uh, and there is some computer science. So all of this, uh, these three elements and the three things I have uh, learned about during my studies, um, maybe I have the skills to do my protocol. So I came to see some uh, Stanford friends uh, in January 2021, we were still students mm -hmm. and we started to think really as a side project though guys uh, i think we should think about doing our own decentralized stablecoin protocol uh, we should think about doing a euro stablecoin because there is no big contender out there uh, we didn't have any idea of the hardships we didn't have any idea of how a stablecoin protocol can work well but that's how we started um, mm. the nice. project nice, nice, nice. well you tell me a little bit more about the origin of, of the project and your co-founders uh, but i would like to know more, um, who inspired you as, as a boy? Is there, well, you said that uh, when you arrived at, at Stanford, the, the general mindset um, um, galvanized you to become an entrepreneur, an engineer, and, and, and try to, to follow the, the path of the previous people you mentioned. Um, but before you get to Stanford, um, is there a specific person who inspired you, who impacted you? Um, so except maybe your father or um, your father we can explain. Um, so may I, I'd say it's maybe my brothers. I have two older brothers, okay. and um, we kind of have a competitive mindset in the family, but competitive in the good sense. Like it's not competitive. Uh, I'm going to uh, make you fall and then yeah. put you lower. Uh, it's about uh, like try to to go upper um, exactly. each time. And so my brothers, they are four years and six years uh, older than I am, and they did. Uh, they went to uh, HEC, which is one of the top uh, European uh, European business schools, and um, and I saw that uh, at the same age uh, in high school I was a bit better than them in physics and in math, and I was like, okay, if they did it, maybe I can do it ju just to be a, just to to prove them that uh, they are not better than me. Uh, and so if I had been uh, in a business school, like if I had done HEC, uh, like the no, I mean, not done HEC, but if I had done the preparatory classes to go to HEC, mm -hmm. uh, I would have been in direct competition with them. So I was like, okay, maybe there is a way. And if I hadn't had HEC, yeah, it, 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 it would have been a failure. So I was like, maybe I'm going to try to do something better while not being in direct competition. So that's why I, I, I went to okay. um, do engineering uh, preparatory classes. And, and your brothers, they're entrepreneurs now? Uh, one of them is an entrepreneur, yeah. He okay. built a cyber insurance company. 
He raised with A16Z as well, uh, okay, based nice. in France. He's in the same office in which we are uh, regi registering this podcast. Okay, nice. <laughs> nice. Uh, super interesting. Is there someone else? Or can you explain more about your brother inspiring you? Um, well, it's... I mean, it's not inspiration. Uh, it's inspiration in the sense that uh, they, they, are, they sh are showing the examples, uh, the example before. But it's not uh, inspiration in terms of value and so on because it's uh, we received the same values during yeah. um, our education. Like we got educated by by our parents, so uh, we 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 share the same values. It's more they, they are in advance, so they, they are showing us the way and they are removing the the ceiling uh, on top of our head. Mm. Uh, and I, and I feel it's kind of helpful, you know, to know that it's feasible and. Um, the, the same like, you know, when you arrive at Stanford, you see like, oh, uh, uh, the founders of Snapchat, Instagram were exactly in the same in the same classroom. Uh, and like just to know that it's possible uh, that other people did it before you. It's what I find most uh, mostly inspiring, you know, mm. uh, when now in the space, uh, like in the DeFi space, uh, and this is what inspires us today and what uh, gives us the strength, uh, I feel at Engel, is to realize that the other teams which have exploded, like the Ave team, the Compound team, the Uniswap team, technically, they are not so much better than us. And they were in the position in which we are at the moment, and we just need to do the right choices uh, to be able to eventually make it one day uh, like them. And so finding people who were in the same situations uh, and who managed to do something really cool, this is my, my main driver, uh, I'd say. OK. All right. Is there a specific mentor? you have in mind you want to quote? Uh, let me find, let me... Maybe one of your early investors. Um, no, there, there are some of, of my investors I really like. Uh, I, I like the way some VCs uh, are with, uh, with their portfolio companies, like the team at Alven, Bartosz uh, Jakubowicz. Yeah. Um, he, is a, he is a great guy. Like, uh, he understands what's going on. Uh, he is helpful, but not, not intrusive. And... I wouldn't say that they are mentors, but they are a good advice. Uh, Julien Boutlou is an investor in the in the protocol uh, in the in the company that develops the protocol, and um, he is also he is also a great inspiration because sometimes you you, you are having a hard time knowing what he thinks. Uh, I mean, not not what he thinks, but um, what he believes. Um, <laughs> like sometimes, yeah, yeah, um, yes, yeah, yeah. You 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 need to do this. Uh, you don't know whether he has understood, but in fact he has understood and he's seeing <laughs> further than what you can see. Okay. So once, once you know how he thinks, uh, you're like, okay, this guy is really smart. Uh, and he has a vision for the space that um, we don't have. Like the scale of his vision goes beyond what, uh, what's the scale uh, of ours. So it's important to have people who can see yeah, further down the, the line. The one tells me that about Julien. Maybe I have to get him on my podcast. Then. Uh, you, need, you need to get him. You need to get him. All right. I will. I will. I will. So let's get back on, on Angle Protocol. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the origin of the project? You said it started as a side project uh, with your friends. When it, did it become uh, like serious? Um, can so you we explain a bit more about what is Angle actually. Uh, Angle is a decentralized uh, stablecoin protocol. Okay. We're like Maker okay. uh, for the DAI, but we are doing a Euro stablecoin. Uh, AG Euro, we have the, the possibility to do with the protocol other stable coins, mm -hmm. and we will do um, more stable coins on the line. Um, so What's this specific about the, the virtualized? The it's uh, over over collateralized. So it's it's everything happens on chain through smart contracts, and we have smart contracts in which you give collateral, we remove the volatility of this collateral and make AG Euro, which is something stable. Okay. Uh, we've built a complex machine, and with Angle. Uh, in Angle, you have all the technical elements you find in other big decentralized stablecoin protocols like Maker, like Frax, mm -hmm. and so on. So you can borrow a G Euro or the Euro stablecoin against uh, collateral, uh, like uh, against over collateralized debt position. Mm -hmm. You can mint a G Euro at a 1 1 rate against USD um, stablecoins, and we are hedging ourselves by issuing perpetual futures. Uh, to okay, remain so delta, neutral. delta neutral. Uh, yeah, we, uh, we, yeah, it's not all about the delta neutral stuff. We have a portion of we, that we call a module of the protocol where uh, we hedge ourselves against our collateral volatility. Um, you can borrow a G euro uh, against uh, other collateralized positions. We have what we call direct deposits module in which we uh, put a G euro whenever people use uh, other euro stable coins to get a G euro so that there is no slippage uh, for buying a G euro. Um, so we have different elements and the underlying uh, like point of, of all these elements is that a Euro is 
run by a decentralized governance. Um, there are token holders uh, which can vote for where the protocol goes, uh, what decisions are made, where reserves are invested. That's the first thing. The other thing is that, uh, and it's a corollary, that it's fully transparent. Everything uh, that is happening at Engel can be tracked by everyone. There are many dashboards which, are, which, can, which you can use to monitor the state of the protocol uh, and see like, what happened to FTX couldn't happen to Engel. It's impossible. Um, because you can see where money is, you can see on-chain the assets and the liabilities of the protocol. Um, and we try to aim, to aim for a higher capital efficiency than other stablecoin protocols. Um, like minting a hero, it's a bit cheaper than minting DAI. Um, and everything we're doing technically, I feel it's like Maker uh, or other stablecoin protocols, but 30% better. Um, for instance, our borrowing module, the way like that, the thing that allows you to borrow a euro against ETH, so you put 1.5 of ETH, you can borrow one AG euro. Our liquidation engine is far, far more efficient than, um, uh, yeah, than, on, than on Maker. Uh, then on Maker. Then on Maker and then on Compound, then on Aave, and then other protocols which use a liquidation engine. I mean, it's easy for us because we launched our product after them, so we, can, we could see what's not going well uh, in there, what's, what can be improved, and you know, they, they, they were the beta testers, we tried to improve, and then other protocols will then improve uh, on top of what, what our improvements. And that's what I like about the space, you know, it's so composable, and everyone can see what others are doing, and, and collectively we are um, going to, yeah, n not really a competition, it's a no, competition. It's a good competition. It's a good competition, like driving better, safer protocols. Um, Interesting. I would be very curious about, um, you know, I'm a physician and a mathematician, uh, and um, I like to look at the modeling behind the DeFi protocol. So um, I would be very curious to see what uh, your angle and... and, and uh, I mean, the... Uh, if, if you want, we can go back to the story uh, of Engel and then I could give you like what's our end goal and what we're aiming for. But, um, you know, at first, when back in January 2021, um, when we started to build the, the protocol, uh, it was just like a side project. We were having one call per week. I was in, uh, in France and uh, my, my co-founders, which also went to Polytechnique, uh, Picodes and Guillaume and, um, and Stanford, uh, we were having calls like, oh, uh, should we make the protocol this way, this way? And when we were done with our studies um, in March 2021, it was still the top of the bull market. Um, and well, maybe we should continue. Like uh, the market, it's exploding. Uh, we need to do something out of here. So we decided to go full time for like a month, month and a half, see what we give. We finished our white paper. Um, we made a simulation and we sent everything to the VCs we knew. The only VCs we knew at the time was uh, A16Z because mm -hmm. they were the ones who went to speak uh, in our crypto class. We had no idea that they were like the, the, the best ones. We also got into contact with um, like um, Alven and other French VCs. And we rapidly saw that there was some momentum and the protocol, we didn't have any idea of whether it would work or not. Um, we, the protocol worked uh, like, the, they liked the idea, the VCs liked the idea. And May, so we got full time in March 2021. In May, uh, we signed a term sheet with A16Z. I think what they liked the most is the reiterations. You know, we really started from scratch. Uh, we had no experience in DeFi. We knew how to code in Solidity. And we, we had regular calls for like two months and, and they saw that we were rapidly iterating, rapidly progressing. And when you are starting a proje uh, project, I think that's the best way with which, um, that's the best signal you can send to a VC, like so show you your speed of iteration as you are having these VC talks. And when people are like, oh, I'm going to pause everything to raise funds for two months, I don't think it's a good idea uh, because as you are speaking to VCs, um, if you're uh, only like uh, you, you guys are like co-founders, you need you need to be able to 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 still make progress on the product as you're raising. Like raising is not uh, is not the end; it's just the beginning. Uh, something that will give you the mean to achieve your end. So we received the term sheet. So we raised the five million dollar round with A16Z. Then we're like, okay, maybe let's five million. Five, five million sorry, <laughs> uh, five million. Uh, and um, like, okay, maybe it's going to be our job uh, and we'll do this full time. Uh, so we, we grew a small team. Mm -hmm. uh, we kept uh, building the protocol and we went live on the Ethereum mainnet uh, in November, 2021. Um, and, and so far, how much liquidity do you have? What's the so, supply of so uh, It's bear market for everyone mm -hmm. in the sense that we used to be bigger than so what we are now. All time, high, yeah. all time high, we had uh, 250 million in TVL. Okay. 180 million of AG euro in circulation. Okay. 
Okay. Now it's uh, 65 million in TVL and 46 million in Giro in circulation. But uh, AG Euro is still the most traded Euro stable coin out there. Okay. Uh, like we are making up 70% uh, of the decentralized exchange volume. 70%? Uh, okay. 70%. 70 okay. uh, of Uniswap, like every uh, for trade. For Euro stable coins. For Euro stable coins. Okay. Yeah, not of stable coins uh, globally, but 70% of the volume on decentralized exchanges. Because we are, we're, and we are the most integrated, the, most the best integrated uh, stable coin. Okay. Uh, like this is your, you think your, is your, your reason? Because why uh, other stab Euro stable coin didn't work? Uh, they, 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 they work, some are bigger in size than uh, AG Euro. Okay. Some are cheating a bit, you know, like when you're a centralized stablecoin, you can mint uh, 200 million uh, of your Euro stablecoin in a, in, a, in a wallet. And so to inflate your, your figures, but um, like, okay, uh, like we, we, with the governance of Angle, we could mint a billion uh, AG Euro, uh, let it idle uh, on a smart contract. And, and we would be the biggest Euro stablecoin in terms of circulating supply, but you know, it's, it's kind of like cheating. Uh, so it's hard to, to know which ones are really big and which ones are fake, uh, fake uh, circulating supply. Um, but I think it has to do with the model of the protocol, the volume we have. Like we are making the peg of all other euro stable coins since we are infinite, AG euro is infinitely tradable against USDC. You can mint AG euro from USDC at a 1-1 rate and you can burn it at a 1-1 rate. Mm -hmm. So whenever, like uh, let's say there is a variation in the euro USD, um, like um, forex uh, pair, like let's say you have a euro C, for instance, the circle euro stable coin. What people are going to do to ARB euro C, they are going to trade to AG euro and then trade AG euro to USDC, mm -hmm. um, which is what is going to allow euro C to go back to peg with respect to other USD stable coins. Mm -hmm. Because uh, everything can be done on, uh, on chain and you don't have to do uh, arbitrage with other centralized exchanges. Um, and this is because AG euro is mostly like. Uh, only exist in DeFi at the moment. And also we are available on different chains uh, and it's really like launching a stable coin is like launching a new standard. No one has incentives to use your stable coin unless other people use it. So we've been quite aggressive uh, in our cross chain expansion. Um, try to go, uh, we are on Polygon, Optimism, Arbitrum. Uh, we are getting ready for a Starknet deployment uh, of the stablecoin. Stablecoin is also available on Avalanche, on DSC, beyond Ethereum mainnet. It's on Tezos. Uh, it's, on it's on Tezos. Uh, you issued it or you no, no, it? we rely on, on, uh, on uh, it's bridged. Um, okay, using wrap? Uh, plenty. Uh, yeah, wrapped. Uh, okay. Hugo Ronadans uh, bridge. Hugo, Hugo Ronadans bridge. And now it's a burnt, um, burnt bridge. Uh, okay. Yeah, in the uh, and so it's on plenty? It's on plenty, yes. Okay, okay cool, 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 cool. Okay. There is a bit of, of liquidity on plenty. Um, okay. But yeah, like um, we've been trying to integrate and um, trying to reinforce the, the protocol, uh, reinforce the offerings you have uh, as a protocol, because you know, when you're making a decentralized stablecoin, when you are contributing to building a decentralized stablecoin, like decentralized stablecoins are more inefficient than centralized stablecoins when it comes to the on-ramping and off-ramping. You know, centralized stablecoin, it's yeah. just so easy. You give one euro, you get one euro stablecoin, redemption, it's the same. On our side, uh, as decentralized stablecoins, you need some over collateralization levels uh, so that the stablecoin remains at peg because it's not backed by fiat, it's backed by collateral, uh, crypto collateral in, held in smart contracts. So you cannot compete uh, with euro stablecoins uh, on this and you even need them to facilitate the unramping and the off-ramping to your stablecoin. Where you can compete <coughs> is that as builders of decentralized stablecoins, you can uh, create natively integrations around uh, your stablecoin. So for instance, um, getting leverage uh, on crypto by borrowing uh, euro, it's cheaper to do it and it's always going to be cheaper to do it using AG euro than using any other euro stablecoins. Since we can build as uh, contributors to the decentralized protocol, we can build the leverage tools. Like we can bridge the features which allow people to put uh, ETH, borrow AG euro, swap this AG euro to ETH, uh, we can build it natively around AG Euro so that the borrowing cost of AG Euro is super cheap. But if you want to get leverage on Euro C, for instance, you need to put ETH, borrow Euro C, but to borrow Euro C, you need to borrow on Aave on Compound, and it costs like 2%, 3%, swap your Euro C to ETH. Uh, on AG Euro, since the protocol controls the minting of AG Euro, we can decide that you are not going to be borrowing AG Euro at 2%, 3%, but you are going to be borrowing it at 0.5% a year or 0%. So we can natively build integrations around AG Euro, which can make it more attractive to use than Euro stablecoins, where 
um, like our job is to build protocols and the job of decentralized of centralized uh, stablecoin providers is to build the infrastructure for the unramping and the off-ramping and it's a very different thing uh, you are you are doing all right uh, there, I have I have a, a question more in regard what happens to Luna and uh, and uh, the, the first crypto collapse sure. uh, what was the general feeling of uh, your partners your your potential clients, your users um, after, after Luna's crash? I think it's kind of the same as what's happening and now for, for FTX. Like Luna, everyone knew it would crash. Like all the serious people knew it would crash. I had announced it in yeah. some like talks and so on that it would crash. People shouldn't hold uh, USD. Um, uh, the reason is that they are using, they used an endogenous collateral. Uh, so the collateral that was backing UST was a collateral which health was linked to the health of UST. Yeah. So it, it works well in, in a like, um, bull market where it creates a virtuous circle, but in bear market where everything collapses, like if people stop trusting uh, UST, they stop trusting your collateral, meaning um, more people will stop trusting UST and like yeah. this, this is how everything uh, unfolds. Um, but like on our side, um, how, it, uh, how it impacted us, on the one hand, um, people were like, ah, decentralized stablecoin protocols, they are all like UST uh, and it's going to fail. Um, I don't want to use AG Euro, but um, other people which understand a bit more how stablecoin work, they're like, okay, maybe um, algorithmic stablecoins and all these Ponzi schemes, uh, we're going to stop using them to start using more serious and uh, protocols which uh, are using models which rely on over collateralization only exogenous collateral so like it impacted the global trust in stable coins but it showed at the same time the resilience of what we and the robustness of what we we, we built a zero has never depicted uh, it has always kept its fake even during the luna crisis even during the ftx crisis there has never been a single alarm nor a single hack on the protocol um, and like this kind of, um, when, when turmoil hits the market, it's always a good time to show that maybe we're building something that can hold uh, against super adverse market conditions. And this is how we felt it. Like uh, we felt that we lost a year uh, for the global stablecoin adoption, but for the good, you know, like uh, to start on a good basis, on good foundations that will enable us to, uh, with AG Euro to, to really show that we've built something which is serious. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, I wish you all the best on, on, on that. Um, you've shared some of your KPIs uh, in terms of TVL. Um, um, is there any other KPI you want to share? What was the, what was the, um, how did you get to 200 million? Is it thanks to A16Z and the network? It's mostly incentives. Uh, like okay. uh, we, there is a, a token that is governing the protocol. Um, and um, we, uh, as a DAO, we incentivized um, AG Euro holders in different places in DeFi, mm -hmm. and people trusted uh, the Angle token, people, uh, uh, because of who's backing one of the team contributing to the protocol, like us. Um, and so A16Z helped uh, put trust on the project, meaning people uh, gave value to the Angle token we were distributing as incentives, and this is what helped us to, to grow. And people also liked the technical elements uh, and foundations of the protocol, so this is what get even more value to the incentives we were we were giving, uh, and this is what helped us uh, reach this and, size. And, and what's your what's your path to decentralization? You've mentioned uh, you have a, a board controlling the governance so far. Um, the so fully there, there's no board per se. Uh, like all the votes on the protocol are, are happening uh, on snapshot. Like people can vote with their. VE angle tokens, so angle tokens which are locked. Um, and, and then these votes are implemented on chain by multi-sig, which, uh, which is composed of some core team members, including myself, and other external like big DeFi contributors. So we have Zero, 0x Maki, okay. we have uh, Julien Bouclou, we have a um, contrib uh, contributor, uh, Sebastian from MakerDAO, so that uh, it doesn't only rely on one of the team building on the protocol, but it relies on other people which are making sure that um, this multi-sig is implementing really what has been voted uh, by the angle governance. The path to decentralization for us, it's super clear. It's about removing this multi-sig uh, and making sure that votes uh, are done now on-chain uh, and that uh, they are implemented without the need to trust a multi-sig, even though everything we're doing everything so that the multi-sig, like uh, to reduce the, the importance of this multi-sig and the trust you have to place in the, uh, the multi-sig that is implemented what's being voted. 
Uh, but when it comes to uh, the real decentralization in the protocol in the sense of who are the token holders, I think we're more decentralized than many of the protocols uh, out there. Like um, the core team doesn't own a majority of the tokens. Uh, like there are some votes uh, that we want to pass and that do not pass. Uh, and there, there were some votes which we did not want to pass, which passed. Uh, and the multi six still implemented them. Uh, and as a core team and as the founders of the protocol, uh, we still have an influence, but it's not as big as what it is in other DeFi protocols you are hearing about. And I feel like that's one of the KPI I'm most proud of, like uh, the part of the total supply we are controlling, which is inferior, which doesn't guarantee us a success and a full control on the protocol. And it showed that we managed to build a community, which is quite big, um, to, to, and which makes me kind of bullish on the future state of uh, the decentralization of what we're building. Uh, mm, alors, wait, because I had a question uh, in, in regard of, um, of, can you explain a little bit more of the, of the mechanic of your, of your token? The uh, angle token? Yeah. Uh, it's super simple, uh, like, um, so the angle token is what is distributed, but it doesn't give you a vault in the, go in vault in the governance, like a uh, rate. You have to lock it uh, okay. for period ranging from one week to four years. And the more, your the long... Your, your, your voting weight increases? Yes, the, the longer you lock, uh, the longer you, the bigger your voting weight. Okay. Um, and so when you own the e-angle, you, you get uh, three different things. So you get to vote uh, on the governance votes, you get to vote uh, on where new angle tokens are being issued. Uh, you get, uh, so on four different things actually, you get um, a boost, like let's say you are participating in some farm which is yielding uh, angle tokens. Uh, if you own the angle, you are going to be getting more angle tokens than if you don't. And last thing is uh, you are entitled to weekly rewards, uh, like to revenue, uh, portion of the revenue of the protocol is directed to the angle holder. So, so far the protocol has made like, uh, has distributed 1.1 million, 1.2 million uh, worth of dollars, uh, dollars uh, to the angle holders. Um, and um, um, is there any deflationary mechanism? Um, no deflationary because uh, from an economic perspective, like distributing rewards, it's equivalent to doing a buyback of tokens. Mm -hmm. So like. It's, it's the same, like there is a stream of money uh, if you, you own the token and if you actively participate in the governance. Yeah, well, the only difference is that uh, in, in, when you burn the token, everybody gets uh, increased. Uh, and in this so case, only VE yeah. angle holders get, uh, get the increase. Um, all right, all right, super interesting, super interesting. Uh, I think uh, that's a good way to go and, and, and pretty good uh, uh, same tokenomic structure. Um, what's what, what's the future holds for, for Angle? Uh, are you planning on releasing new pro yeah. products, new uh, projects? We are constantly, like we, we have a lot of the ideas uh, now that we're in the space. Um, now Angle has been so far a decentralized stablecoin protocol. Mm -hmm. The way I, I, I would like um, the protocol to become, uh, I'm not the sole uh, decision maker here. The way I would like the protocol to become um, is like something that builds uh, new DeFi primitives. Uh, like. AG Euro is Angle um, flagship product, but there is a lot we, we know how to build uh, and I have some ideas of what needs to be built. Uh, we have some ideas of what needs to be built and we want to contribute to the, um, to the development of DeFi as a whole and not only to the development of non-USD stable coins. So for me at this point, like DeFi is kind of useless. Uh, I'm a bit controversial uh, saying this, but I feel um, it was mostly about a proof of concept. You know, we've shown that we were able to do decentralized exchanges. We've shown that we were able to do lending protocols. We've shown that we were able to do decentralized stablecoin protocols. Um, we've shown that we were able to build composable protocols. Uh, that, and now it's more about giving some real finance influx uh, to DeFi. Yeah. Um, because let's remember what we're building. You know, we, we are trying to build an open financial ecosystem with less intermediaries where everything is transparent so that the, what happened to FTX and what happened with Madoff, what happened to Enron never happens again because everything could be seen uh, on chain. Um, and so I stick like wh what I care about is promoting this vision of an open financial ecosystem and I want Angle as a protocol and myself as a builder to contribute to, to building this world. So. Now, when we decide to build new stuff uh, uh, with, with the team, we're like, okay, is it something which has never been done before? One, 
and is it something which is going to help DeFi grow? Uh, and these are, this is the prism we have when we are making a decision. And so we have new ideas of products which can create more links uh, between CeFi and DeFi um, we are working on. I, I won't say more uh, now because it's still, uh, it's still in the works, but uh, like this, is, this right. is the vision I have um, to, to, to contribute to open finance. And we have right. all the technical elements. We are backed by the best funds in the world. And now it's all about working, uh, and we're not going to be distracted by uh, what happened to, to FTX for this. Great, great, great. No, that's, uh, that's great to know. And indeed, I totally agree with you. I think the, the first wave of DeFi was um, very simple, uh, very proof of concept. Um, there is not a lot of creativity in the protocols. There are, there is, um, they are pretty simple, like you were saying, in terms of modeling. Um, all of them are copycats, so there, there is definitely room for, for improvement and innovation, and yeah. it's the only way to attract big money. Um, let's, let's get back on you. Um, so from what you've said, you, you, you're in crypto for about less than a year or something like no, that. No, more now. Now no, we have some experience. Uh, uh, you're very young to, uh, to, to, to Web3 and crypto. Um, how, do you, how would you discount your, your learning curve? And... Um, how would you describe being a Web3 founder? Um, so the, the learning curve in crypto, it's well, when you are starting to learn, there are so many things it's hard to understand. And um, you, you have to spend time uh, really understanding the basic of the protocol. I'm working with some, uh, like uh, every day with some people uh, who lack fundamentals, uh, like from other teams and so on, which do not understand uh, the basics behind Univ3, Univ2. And you need to play around by yourself. Uh, you need to read the white papers, read the docs. And you'll know that you are in the uh, asymptotic phase of the learning curve, like where you're learning less um, for a similar amount of yeah. time spent, uh, when you're able to categorize protocols super fast. <laughs> um, and this is, um, like, for me, the most important, uh, like being able to see a protocol and in five minutes, know, okay, this guy, they are a fork of this, or these guys, they are doing this and this, it can work because, no, or it doesn't work because in this situation, and being able to, in five minutes, without having to read the whole white paper, but just the first pages of the talk, know how the protocol works, what's the principles behind it, because there are not so many innovations, like there, isn't, there are not so many new things. And so, yeah, it's important. Uh, um, th this is this is where uh, you, you are at the top of the learning curve, and then it's only like going further down the line. But w once you don't have, once you arrive to this point, uh, w once you're not at this point yet, and when you st we need a, uh, an hour to understand the protocol, well, you still need to 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 play, spend more time building. Um, and your second question was about um, um, what is it? Um, what did you find hard? As a Web3 founder, uh, yeah. in Wh comparison to your brother who are entrepreneurs but not in Web3. Um, what's hard is the uncertainty of the market. Like yeah. uh, uh, when you are a Web2 founder, uh, you know like you, you, you know the roadmap. Uh, you know that you need to hire a growth team. You know that you need to hire a marketing team. You know that you need to hire a sales team because you are just building a, a normal product and uh, you need to do customer success uh, yeah, you need to do customer success and so on. So it's hard uh, because there are not so many people who succeeded in doing this, but you, you, you know what you need to do once you have your market fit. Uh, you, you have some strategic decisions to do, but the, the, the environment, uh, it's less blurry than now. What's hard in crypto is that you, you may have a conviction, but you don't know whether the market will share your conviction about uh, what, what needs to be done um, and what the market is going to look like. And this is, this is the hard thing. Uh, in bear market, there is a lot of negativity. Mm -hmm. um, we, we are still determined and we will keep building uh, at Angle, but it would be easier if we were in a more stable environment. Uh, but that's what uh, you have to pay that's for being early, I guess. Uh, those opportunities. <laughs> that, that's what gives the opportunities and that's the reason why I went to crypto and it's Fred Sam who come to, to, tell, uh, to tell us this when we were at Stanford. He said, look, in the 20... Like 20, uh, 2010, um, 2010, you could be like three people in a room, build Snapchat uh, or Instagram, get a billion users. And now we are at the time in crypto where you can be a small team. We're nine at the moment uh, at Angle Labs uh, contributing to the Angle protocol. You can be a small team of nine and build protocols that have billions of dollars in value. Um, and if you want to build something of the scale of Facebook, well, you need to be super well funded like TikTok uh, and have uh, thousands and thousands of engineers. Uh, and right now in crypto, you can be a really, really tiny team, have the right idea, execute it well, 
uh, and it can scale a lot. And that's the, that's the upside uh, of crypto at the moment. You just need to get there, and once you don't have this network effect, it's pretty hard uh, to, to, to achieve, but uh, yeah. Um, is there anything you, you would have done differently since you've started as an entrepreneur? Um, what do you think you failed or you were not as good as? I mean, if we had known how the market would have evolved and if we had more experience in the DeFi space, there are some products we would have built differently. And that's, but that's not really a regret because if you put us in the same mindset at the same time, mm -hmm. um, would have been, it would have been different. No, I think I would have spent more time uh, building the team. Now I'm super happy with the team we, we have with, uh, with Angle, but we were like, okay, let's rush to build a product to go to go on mainnet. And um, I would have, in this sense, act uh, more like a Web2 founder, like uh, first grow the team uh, that's going to go far. And um, But, uh, you know, we, we kind of iterated a lot on this, uh, and I would have spent more time trying to see what are really our needs uh, what, what kind of uh, profiles do we need to, to build what we want to build? And it would have enabled us to go faster and to do more things. Uh, but now, now we are in a good position, like uh, I feel with the team we have uh, at the moment. Do you have uh, some, um, some daily routines? Uh, I have my daily stand-up at, uh, at 10 a.m. every day yeah. <laughs> with, with, the, with the rest of the team. Oh, <laughs> no, I sent, uh, I sent them a message. I, I told them I would be late. Um, no, uh, I think a routine is super important. So I usually uh, wake up at the same time. Uh, and well, I don't go to bed always at the same time because uh, it's a Parisian life. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I often have dinners out and so on. But um, yeah, like... Uh, trying to keep same work hours every day. It's a marathon, not a sprint. So I've never worked in my life like past midnight, uh, even when I was in prepa, even when I was in Stanford, when I had big projects. And I feel that sleeping a lot uh, and working regularly, it's the, the best you can do for like long-term Where success. Where do you get your news to stay up to date on the market? Twitter. Twitter? Yeah. Is there someone you recommend following? Um, like now we are in the middle of the uh, FTX, uh, FTX stuff. Uh, there is this account like, uh, I think it's uh, Autism Research or something like that. Uh, okay. They are sharing a lot of insight uh, and I'll found autism. it. <laughs> yeah, autism, uh, autism Capital, uh, I, I need to find the account, but uh, they, they are the ones I'm following to get all the updates are about FTX. But no, I like Kobe for instance. Um, all right. Uh, he's a good guy to follow. The what? Kobe. Uh, a, good a good guy to follow like yeah. Yeah, he has a lot of alpha and so on uh, okay uh, super interesting do you have any prediction on the market absolutely uh, I'm, I'm a terrific trader uh, I, I think I've lost I've lost more money in crypto than, than, than I made <laughs> so I, I meant to know more about um, how long do you think that the market will, will continue uh, uh, what uh, do you think is the next big hype in crypto the big hype is i think what uh, we're building i guess around cfi defi and yeah. we will want to be like uh, the bull market i think was created by compound and the launch of uh, the creation of field farming on chain and i want to create the next hype uh, with uh, with anger and so create a new primitive that's going to you know start things again and change the narrative of the space and change the way people view web3 um, you know, so that people can really start seeing it out. Oh, this, this can really bring value. Uh, I can be better off using Web3 than using Web2 um, or than using TradFi. And yeah, this is, um, this is uh, like, uh, I, I'd like to say that it is going to depend on when we're going to launch our new products. But uh, <laughs> now if, I, if I'm a bit less... Uh, <laughs> it's not just about no, no, the yeah, I'm, about I'm, the I'm, the I'm going to be I'm going to be a bit more careful. No, I think we have at least two years uh, of bear market. But yeah. we, we are funded, well funded to, to hold during this time. So right. cool. we will still be here in two years. Happy to, uh, to learn that. <laughs> <laughs> now, thank you. Uh, thank you, Pablo. It was uh, very insightful. Um, I love the, the exchange. I wish you all the best with uh, Angle and I will be obviously following this closely and uh, probably during the week I will open a, a Doga Angle uh, Euro pool <laughs> on, on plenty. <laughs> cool, cool, that'd be great. Thanks, uh, Bilal.